Welcome back everyone. Um, today I got a new video for you. I'm going to be basically discussing the question of should you delete your old images you don't like anymore. So it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately just because I've been really I think improving my portfolio and everything. So today's just going to be mainly I'm just going to take about 21 or so images I got here. I just randomly picked them out from my portfolio and I'm just going to be kind of critiquing them and showing you kind of ways to improve images because I've taken a lot over the years of course hundreds upon hundreds but I mean not always do I like all of them so or maybe I like them at the time but not so much now you know just for different reasons my compositional you know skills have improved and stuff like that so we're just going to go through these but first I just want to kind of answer that question so I believe that you know if you don't really like an image as much anymore then you should not necessarily delete it but you should definitely take it off you know your social media maybe or like your website especially I'd say if you have like a portfolio set up you know I, I definitely don't think you want you want to show your best work on there and you don't want to have it just over encumbered with images you don't like as much now so I definitely take it off your website um, should you delete it though is a question I'm you know I'm not sure it depends on what you think at least you know, if you, if storage space is a very, you know, it's an issue for you, then I'd definitely say delete it, but nowadays storage space is just so, you know, it's cheap, it's easy to get, you know, several terabytes of data. So it's, there's really no excuse for that, for like a JPEG or a RAW file that's, you know, five to 10 megabytes at most, you know. Another idea is that you could maybe allocate, you know, all these older images that maybe you don't like as much anymore. You could allocate them to a separate like folder or file space and then just have them there, you know, just to kind of like it be a reference. So if you ever want to look back at how you've improved and matured as a photographer, you could do that as well. I think it's important to some extent, you know, you gotta show your growth, you know, you gotta show where you've been. So it's definitely good to like look back at images like I'm gonna do here now and then see how you've improved. So without further ado, let's get started. So this first image is of a African elephant at Columbus Zoo. And I, I like the idea of it. Um, there's, a couple of details definitely that bug me. The biggest glaring imperfection for me is this, uh, whatever this blue, like, carpety looking thing is that's right in between his um, trunk and his front leg. And it's just, it's all right there. And it just, my, the first thing I always goes to, my eyes always draw to when I see this image is just whatever this is, you know, that blue. And it's just, it's, the color sticks out, but it's, it sticks out in a wrong way where I'm just immediately drawn to it when I really shouldn't be. I should be focusing on this elephant. But the thing is, the elephant really doesn't stick out from the, uh, the wooden planks or this wall behind it as well, which is really a big problem for me. But I feel like it still has quite a bit of a story. You know, maybe, maybe this is like an image that's photojournalistic in a way, just because of how it shows it, just kind of walking in. You can tell it maybe like it threw some above it, some like, looks like grass or whatever on its back and head. As you can tell, so I like the image still. It's not. It's obviously that blue thing. Maybe I could try editing it out with like a cloning tool or something, but I don't know. Um, another thing is I would say is the way I I kind of barely clipped the uh, top of the, the very top of the back. If you can kind of tell on the image, and that kind of bugs me a little bit too. But and then there's on the very farthest uh, left edge, you kind of see the end of the wall. And I, I don't know. I know I'm about that, but I would personally crop that out. But overall, I still like the image. It's the lighting is decent. It's not too harsh on it, but um, it's just that blue thing. Whatever this is, it's just you know, it takes my eyes right to it. I'm drawn to it, and I don't want it to be. Is basically I, I should have waited when I had this image. Maybe if it kept stepping a few feet to the left or a few inches at least, it would cover that with its like body. But you know, you live and learn. Timing is a big thing, I'd say, with photos. You know, you definitely have to wait it out because certain images, like some some of the other ones I'm going to show you here, you know, you gotta wait because then you could just improve the photo dramatically if you just like move yourself or just wait for the animal or something to move itself. All right, the second image is of a Japanese monkeys. It's at the same zoo, Columbus Zoo. Um, so this is actually an image I really liked. I submitted it when I was at school at NYIP, but. Uh, the instructor really liked it, thought it was a very nice image, but the more I look at it now, there's two. There's at least two things that kind of bug me. Um, first off, you can clearly tell at the top, there's um, you can see like the fence basically. And I've always learned is like the way to photograph, you know, wildlife at zoos and stuff, if there's like a fence in the way, you always want to try and get 
out of the way of a fence, but if there's just no you know no choice basically, um, they always say to shoot at a wider aperture. So uh, I really wish I did that here. I, my settings were actually I was at f5, so I had the right idea for the time, but it's just you know I really wish I it would have really helped basically. I was actually shooting with the 75 to 300, so I was really probably trying to really zoom in because I, I remember them being pretty far away. It was just kind of like this circular cage that they're in. These uh, Japanese monkeys, and then uh, the other issue I kind of have compositionally is that I cropped out in the frame, like taking the photo. You know, this wasn't done in post, but I cropped out the um, the farthest on the left monkey, the closest one to us. I cropped out its arm, as you can tell. And and uh, the more I look at this image, the more that part bugs me. But I really like the rest of the framing where it shows all of them kind of looking the same way, except the one the furthest back. Because um, I think they heard like a noise or something. And this this is an image where, you know, perfect timing was kind of like on my side, I guess. But yeah, it's a really darn shame that that arm got cropped out there. Because I think it would have been much more impactful, you know. But I definitely do like the kind of the the leading lines these kind of monkeys make for you. You know, do do do. They just kind of go all the way up, the rise up, and then the last one's looking kind of at my direction. So even in camera, I was like, this one looks really cool. You know, could be a winner. All right, the next image is uh, Beaver Creek Wetland Nature Reserve is where I took it uh, about two or three three years ago, I believe. Uh, so I was basically just messing around, just kind of walking around, hiking. This is the early days for me. Um, so I, I found like this very, very large, uh, like yellow leaf, basically. And so I took my, um, I think it was my 75 to 300 lens, and then I just held up the leaf right to the, it was kind of still harsh midday light, as you can tell but I just held it right up to the light and just took a picture of it, handheld, I think. So, it was, it's a cool idea, I guess, at the time. You know, I, I kind of liked what I was going for here. I guess I was going for like some kind of abstraction, basically. But the problem was, is that holding up to that harsh midday light, I just, I blew out some really bad, nasty highlights, as you can tell, like the edges of these leaves and the holes, you know? It's got all these blown outs, and I just feel like, you know, I could have done it so much better if I just, laid the leaf flat or just waited for a much more, you know, attractive light. But other than that, I like the image, you know. It, it's a cool idea, I guess. You know, so this is something I want to try out again maybe someday. But uh, maybe kind of step back a little bit because I feel like I'm too close to the leaf. You know, maybe we show off the whole details or something like that. That'd be really cool. Or maybe even try like a, maybe try like a sunburst effect. You know, something like that would be very interesting. But it's definitely something I might want to retry and revisit you know, and try to improve upon it. All right, the, the next image is, um, it's basically a whole textured photo of uh, red fallen deciduous leaves um, taken kind of near the peak of autumn. So I was just underneath this kind of big old tree and then I was like enamored by, basically all the leaves had fallen off, but all around the tree in a circle was just these red leaves. And so I really, I still love this image for sure, but there's a couple of things I, I would improve upon, so. I'd say first, uh, if you can tell in the kind of upper left-hand corner here, there's um, kind of some, the sunlight was kind of glaring through. And I definitely think this image could have been improved upon if I used a polarizing filter. I don't believe I did. I know I did have one at this time, but I feel like I really would have improved, you know, taking off the kind of glare on those leaves and the reflections. And then another thing is if you're kind of a believer in like kind of manipulating your photos, I just took this like as it was naturally, I guess. but. Uh, I would definitely remove this green leaf that's kind of up in the uh, kind of the tupper the, the the upper left hand corner and then uh, there's another kind of orangish leaf that's kind of the bottom left and um, I would personally remove those two because it's kind of a distraction but I guess if I wanted to I might actually try it now that I'm thinking about it I could uh, clone them out in post processing so cl the cloning tool is very helpful for you know I know with me I'm kind of like a little bit perfectionist with this so you can easily just clone out little like details, you know, if there's dust spots on your sensor, you know, I noticed in all of my kind of photos with skies is that, you know, you get lots of dust spots, so I just clone those out basically, um, that it really helps, but I really love what I was thinking of, you know, going for with this image. Um, another problem I would say is that I shot at f.6, which I'm not sure why, I should have shot at a much, you know, shallower depth of field to really show off the whole, you know, keep everything in focus, but it really doesn't look too out of focus, I would say overall. So I, I, I did a great job with it, and the mulch or whatever's underneath kind of just helps anchor the rest of the photo. So 
It's definitely one of my favorites still, one of my favorite older ones, you know. And besides those, you know, things I was just discussing, you know, the polarizer filter, you know, which would have helped. I still love this image for sure. The next image is actually at Narrows Reserve. Uh, so I was going for basically an abstraction here, which I feel like I kind of nailed it, but the problem was is that I, I used a tripod, but I guess somewhere along the line, I, I don't know if it was my cable release, because it's, it's a wired cable release, maybe it was like jiggling and kind of moving the camera or whatever, but the thing is, is that you can definitely tell, especially at the end of this um, driftwood, is that there's a lot of camera shake, a lot of um, motion blur. So. I feel like I should have really, really revisited this image, you know, I might actually still you know, revisit the location. I, d I don't know if this driftwood would still be in the same spot or same, you know, look or whatever, especially with rising and falling water in it. I know we've been getting a lot of rain recently, so I definitely want to revisit this kind of idea because I, I really like, as far as like driftwood abstractions, which I really like to do a lot of, um, I definitely want to revisit something like this. It's just that motion blur, you know, it just really, you know, it ruins the whole image, honestly, but because I, I like the color of the water with the green, you know, it's green um, foliage, you know, reflecting off the water, so that gets that green. So I like the complementary colors there, but it's that, yeah, it's that motion blur that just really, you know, sets it off. And yeah, I should have been much more careful with it, you know, because you don't obviously don't want motion blur unless if you're doing ICM, which is intentional camera motion, you know, or if I call it creative blurs, you know, but it's definitely not what I was going for here. You know, I definitely wanted to make a static, you know, nice and tack sharp um, abstraction, you know, reflection. All right, the next image is pretty old, for at least for me. Um, it's at Kugler Wetland Prairie Reserve. And this is just, this boring and flat this is what I call it, especially lighting wise. But I guess I was just trying to emphasize, I feel like this is more of a snapshot for me, honestly. I really didn't think this one through. I, if I remember exactly, I was just walking along the Little Beaver Creek, you know, kind of on the edge there. And I just turn and see this reflection. You know, I guess it was kind of like an early composition reflection for me. And I was just walking along there and I noticed these two kind of uh, tree trunks. They're just, you know, dead tree trunks and they're kind of reflected. So I guess I want to emphasize that. But the problem was is that you really can't tell that's the subject of the image, you know? And plus add to that, you know, the midday light that's just very boring and flat. I just this image really doesn't do much for me, you know. I believe I took it off my website just for that reason. I used to have it on there for the longest time. And even even back then, I really didn't care for this image. You know, it's not, it's not anything too special, honestly, you know. And I don't feel bad saying that because I've taken many, many more um, reflections and stuff that's similar to this that, you know, are far better. You know, better lighting or just better composition. This one just doesn't, it's just, it's just... It's just there, you know? It's not really doing anything for me, personally. All right, the next image is at uh, James Ranch Botanical Garden. Um, it's kind of like spring, summer, so when all the flowers are kind of blooming. This is a uh, Rudbeckia herda. Um, I just did like a little uh, close-up macro with my extension tube and a 50 millimeter lens. And I just got real, in real tight and close, and I love what I'm going for here. I mean, it's got a nice shallow depth of field, pretty close, it's about an F9. But the thing is, is that the way the, because this is harsh midday light, which I definitely I wouldn't advise now. You know, I've kind of learned my lesson from this because the day I took this, I took like tons of photos, I would say. This is um, about late May, you know, when flowers are really in bloom for the most part. But the harsh midday light, you know, it blew out, not blew out, but like it really just crept in the shadows and that, you know, the center and that black part and you really can't tell, and there's no details there is a problem. So, something I would definitely revisit and really want to capture, you know, the, under the best lighting to show off all the details, you know. Other than that, you know, I still like the image, you know, it's not terrible, but I definitely um, feel like it would really benefit if you could tell the center details, you know, because right, to me it looks like on my monitor, it's just like a black blob, you know, you just really can't see what's in there, and I feel like that would really help. Right, the next one's at Oaks Quarry Park. Uh, it's of Carolina Buckthorn. I don't know. I just this feels like another snapshotty one where I'm just like walk, hiking around midday, and I was just kind of like, oh, that's cool, and I just took a picture of it, and really didn't give much thought to the composition or the lighting, because the lighting obviously once again is midday. It's harsh. You know, it's not really any. It's 
you know, it's flat, it's boring. This, this one leaf at the upper right, or a couple leaves, are just, they're nearly like blown out. And, or like the reflections are just so dense there. And, you know, I really should have used a polarizer at the very least, but I feel like it's just, you know, it's just another image where it's just kind of there, you know? I, I guess it's kind of nice because I used uh, F8, so it's kind of shallow. I mean, it's just, you know, it's another just image that's kind of there, you know? I don't really, I'm not like enamored. There's no amazing story about it either, you know? Like I said, I'm just walking along and I'm like, that's cool, you know? And I mean, that can produce the best photos sometimes, but I just feel like in this case, it doesn't, you know, it's just there, it's boring, honestly. You know, it's not doing anything for me. I really wish it was just, you know, had something going for it, you know. All right, this next image is of dried ironweed, and uh, basically it's, it's okay, it's, you know, I, I guess I kind of had the right idea of um, using the kind of green background to kind of distance it from the white of these, uh, this plant. But I really wish on this left side I kind of stepped, you know, kind of pivoted myself so that I got rid of that white, I'm guessing that sky over here on the left side. But there's some decent pleasing looking bokeh, which I kind of like, or bokeh, however you pronounce it. But I used uh, F5, which I'm kind of questioning why, because, you know, you can kind of see only the center kind of part of the portion of the plant is actually in focus and it kind of drops out out of focus on the edges here on the left and right but I don't know why I did that you know once again maybe it's just I didn't know my camera settings as well at the time you know I was probably shooting an aperture priority or something like that um, I don't believe I was in full manual at this time yet or maybe I was and I just didn't know what I was doing you know that could always be a, you know an option but yeah this, this is a pretty older image for me um, I kind of like what I was going for though, but I remember it being fairly windy, not too windy, but you know, kind of just enough where you need a faster shutter, and I don't know, it's just not, you know, it wasn't fast enough, especially for something that's kind of freestanding and tall, like kind of these ironweed are, you know, where it could just easily sway, and the slightest movement from both the uh, photographer with the camera or the plant itself, you know, that could just easily throw out the whole image, you know, blurry and all that kind of stuff. It's not a terrible image, but definitely a lot of things that could be improved upon. All right, the next image is probably one of the oldest ones I have in my portfolio uh, still. It's uh, some Canada geese uh, just flying right over. This is the definition of snapshot. I was actually there to photograph a soccer game for someone, and like basically I just looked up. This is like the end of the game. This is the last image I took while I was there. Was I just looked up. And, you know, I just took my camera, just took a pot shot, you know, honestly, I just looked up, I was like, huh, uh, birds. I don't even think I knew what they, I, mean, I guess I knew they were geese, but I just, like, looked up, heard them, you know, cackling, all that kind of stuff as they flew by, and just took an image. And it's definitely one that's dropped off in my, you know, likeness, I guess, over time, you know, I just don't, you know, I mean, it's cool, I guess, you know, it's cool to see where I've gone, you know, evolved over time, and, um, or converting it to black and white, you know, I think it really helps, but I just, you know, it's just so, it's so far away too, I should have zoomed in, I don't know why I didn't, you know, I took it at 75 millimeters, but it's a zoom lens that I use, uh, so I really just should have, you know, opened that up or zoomed in closer, but I, I do, one thing I do appreciate, I guess, and this is just, this is something I didn't personally intend on, but the wings, if you can tell, the first one kind of has it flapping the other way, like the the, um, the left wing is kind of further out, and then the other one's the opposite. And I think it's cool how it kind of has that that dynamic. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it without showing it, but something like that, you know. But I, I think that's really cool, and the fact that they're kind of off center a little bit, you know. Rule of thirds, of course, you know, or guideline of thirds is what I'd like to say, because you know, it's less a rule and more of a guideline. But I definitely, um, I definitely like the image. It's not terrible, but I just, you know done far better Canada geese photos, especially flyover ones that, you know, actually aren't silhouettes, you know, like this one kind of turned out to be. But I can't appreciate that it was tack sharp, you know. So definitely, you know, I was, I was ready even though it wasn't, you know, it was a stroke of luck, basically. But I've definitely taken far better photos since then. All right, this one's at Oaks Quarry Park again. Um, so a kill deer. I'm actually going to show you kind of a before and after because I love this image. It's um, tack sharp. I'm like basically sitting you know, low, very low to the ground with the bird. And this is like a great day for that. And I love capturing, you know, this kind of behavior and stuff in wildlife, you know, it's kind of what I'm after. Um, this is honestly an amazing image, I love it. But um, one thing I kind of noticed over time 
you know, was the uh, kind of just the distraction. So there's something this this kind of on the left side, if you can see, there's like this little like patch of white. And I mean, sure, it's out of focus, but it's still kind of there. And the way kind of the way kind of psychology works with images is that your eyes are most of the time, at least, drawn to the brightest part of the image. So, while this one isn't too glaringly obvious as like other images I've shown, it's still kind of there. So I definitely want to clone that out. And then another, this is definitely like a perfectionistic opinion nitpick, I guess, is this um, little daisy that's kind of off to the right, right next to the kill deer. And that just kind of bugs me to some extent, I don't know, just because it's kind of in focus as well, but I want everything to just be front and center on the kill deer. But I mean, I guess one lesson I'll take away from this is that you should just, you know, move around. I, I definitely could have, you know, moved a few inches left or right to kind of throw that daisy out of the frame and just have it all centered on the to kill deer. But I'm just going to show you the, here's the after. So this is with uh, the cloning tool, see so before and after. So I, I just kind of cleaned up the image. I got rid of that daisy and the white patch in the background. And so now all the focus is on that kill deer, which I think really helps. And it's really cool. Um, Really cool image. This is definitely one of my favorite um, bird portraits I've made, for sure. And I think another thing it also shows is that post-processing, while I wouldn't recommend you rely on it solely, is um, it definitely helps if you want to go back, you know, and just look at images like this and improve upon them. But it's definitely there as like a backup. All right, the next one's at Sarah Lee Arnovitz Nature Preserve, and I was just experimenting, you know, just kind of the middle of the day, I was in the woods. I was just experimenting on some macro with these leaves and the just kind of the holes that are kind of weaved through them and so and then at one point it took out um, my, my speed light my external flash and I just started I don't know you, you know I was just kind of messing around with the flash you know because I was just want to try something different I guess is what I was going for I mean that's nothing wrong with that of course you know you want to experiment you know and do that sort of thing but the thing is is that I took this image and like I guess the way I had it I think I had it positioned to the left of this image I want to say the flash and I just had it expose, you know, expose the image, but it only illuminated, if you could tell, against the, this kind of crease right here, on this kind of diagonal crease. It only illuminated this side on the left, and it didn't do anything for that. And, I, you know, I don't, just because it's too unnatural lighting-wise for me, I didn't really like that part, but other than that, I mean, it's a cool idea, I guess. You know, it's a little different, for sure. And once again, this might be more of a creative choice, I guess, you know. Right, this next one's at Fairborn Community Park. It's a red-tailed hawk. I was kind of following around in the, the deeply wooded area. And this, like the pe previous image, was also done with external flash. And actually had it attached to a better beamer that kind of extends it. You know, it's good for um, birds in flight and stuff like that. Where you re really want to uh, freeze the motion there. This one uh, in particular, he's just perched right up here. But the problem was, I think I had my flash power set too high. And if you set it too high, animals, um, their eyes get that, you know, the, like the red eye effect with humans, it's kind of the same idea. So if you can clearly tell this eye has like a red and blue um, kind of orb, you know, going on there, which is definitely unnatural. And other than that, you can just really tell just from like the way the trees illuminated and the branches. It's very, uh, you can tell it's definitely taken with a flash. And I don't quite remember how far away it was, but it's pretty far away, I'd say. But I was using my 150-600 lens telephoto. Uh, but this is definitely something to look out for. You know, you definitely want to overpower your flash. You should definitely, you should, if you're going to use artificial light, like external flashes, you should definitely, you know, use them just to, as a fill flash. You know, you just want it to fill in the, the shadows. You don't want to have it overpower the whole image and just make it kind of, you know, unnatural like this. But other than that, you know, I feel like this image could have been a lot better due to that. All right, the next image is at Rust Nature Reserve, and it's about, you know, late summer when, you know, kind of early September when the uh, sunflowers start to really fully bloom. But the problem I have with this one is that, well, the front and center, you know, image, or, I mean, sunflower is tack sharp and it's very nice, but the rule of thirds, once again, where it's just kind of, it's dead center and, you know, it just doesn't really do anything. Cause, but another compositional choice I really question is that I kept this other sunflower out of focus in the background on the left here. And I really don't understand why though, cause you know, I see that more as a distraction. I should have definitely moved in closer, maybe with like a zoom lens or something, and just gotten just the sunflower, you know. Cause I, I feel like, you know, you should go all or nothing. You should either isolate one sunflower, like I should have, or if there's, not, not, not in this case, but if there's like a big wide open field, like I know Tecumseh Land Trust has that um, during this time of year, 
you know, get a, you know, you know, area of wide angles of like the, you know, sunflower fields. So you should definitely go like all or nothing on that, I would say, you know, just do one or just do a whole field of them. But this one's just kind of in between where I don't really, I don't think the image really knows what it's doing. I don't even know if I knew what I was doing, honestly, at the time. But um, definitely something that could have been improved upon. And actually took a crop, I'll show you here now, of the image where I just cropped off that left side. And I actually, this one I feel like is much more impactful. You know, it's very, it's very much better. Because it puts it off center, the main one up here. So the rule of thirds kind of comes into play. But it also crops out the other one. So this is, this is a example of how you can crop photos, which I, I crop most of mine, I would say. If it's like a bird that's far away, you crop it in to get closer. I mean, sure, there's image quality that kind of gets reduced over time if you crop it too hard, but I definitely feel like it helps, you know, a lot in this case, is, you know, as a backup, you know, you definitely don't want to rely on it. So in this case, where I was just, it was just an early beginner mistake, you know, I wanted to help. Luckily, I could use cropping, the cropping tool to really just, you know, help with that. And I feel like this is a much better image than the previous one. All right, the next one's a, a fairly newer one I took last year. I was at Sara Lee Arnovitz Nature Preserve again, but I was experimenting with some macro on these uh, yellow daisies, and there happened to be a bee that landed on there, and I got it nice and tack sharp, as you can tell, but I really should have waited, you know, for the better timing, where maybe the bee would turn around or another bee would land on there, because the way, I love this image, I still love it, of course, but um, I really wish the bee would have been turned towards the viewer, because, right, as you can tell, it's just kind of looking away, which, I mean, this is another one where I guess opinions could be different, you know, maybe some people love that, maybe some people don't, but, for me, it's just, I, I don't know. I feel like it really could have improved, but and it's actually a split second later. Here's basically the same image where you can tell that the uh, the bee's gone, obviously, but it's the same yellow daisies. You decide, I don't know, that bee adds an extra touch, but I love both images regardless. All right, the next one's another oldie. Um, this is actually the first time I saw turkey vultures before, and it's pretty cool because you really don't see them perched pretty often, unless if they're sunning out their, their wings, you know, drying off, and that's particularly in early morning. So this is a pretty cool moment just because it's midday, which is you know a little less common to see him perch. But um, I was actually with a buddy and he just kind of like flew up to a nearby tree. I guess he was on the ground right next to the trail we're walking on. It's a little weird, but um, pretty cool story regardless. But I got this nice um, vertical format, you know, just perched, you know, just showing off. And he just has this, because I was looking up, you know, aiming up and just has this kind of sense of like, He's the master, I guess, you know? And that's a cool compositional trick to try out. You know, it just kind of happened to work that way. But there's definitely a lot of high noise with this one, and you can actually tell kind of in the white parts, you know, I kind of see in the middle, um, underneath this turkey vulture, and you kind of get it, and if you look up at the sky, sometimes you get this kind of fringing, where it's this uh, purple and blue kind of, kind of puts its edges on um, the whiter, you know, the highlights of the image, and that's definitely not something you want to go for. Um, but this is obviously just a surprise moment. I wasn't really planning on this happening, but I definitely love the image and I'm glad I captured the moment regardless. But, you know, it's better to capture it regardless than to, you know, I'd rather have a bad photo that I captured of the moment than a, if none at all, basically. You know, and I'm glad I got this one regardless, but there's definitely some things that would change though. All right, the last image here, and this is probably the newest one on here. Um, I was at Clifton Gorge State Nature Preserve and I was basically doing some long exposures, a very wet and rainy day, but I wanted to kind of, I guess what I was going for here was I incorporated some, the water long exposure from the Clifton Gorge kind of off here on the left side at the bottom, and then I kind of went ahead to just the rest of the landscape up here um, as I looked down. So I, I guess it was a cool idea. I was trying to go for just that juxtaposition, you know, the water, and then it just goes to land half and half, you know, kind of straight down the middle. So I guess, I guess it's kind of cool, a compositional thing, but, I don't know why I did this in post, is I just really upped the saturation, and I feel like it's way, it's way too overpowering for me, looking at it now, you know, because I just got these, these red, the reds of these leaves is just too much for me. The, um, the greens of the foliage, it's just, you know, those leaves, it's just all the, all the leaves basically are just, it's way too saturated and colorful for me, I feel like. You know, I, I definitely love, you know, upping, you know, I love to use saturation. You know, I don't know what I was thinking when I was editing it, but it just kind of turned out very, a little too colorful for me, I'd say. But other than that, you know, I, I think it's a pretty pleasing image, I would say, overall. Maybe another thing would be, if you can kind of tell on the right side especially, there's some leaves that kind of have reflections. I definitely should have messed around with the polarizer filter. 
um, contact polarizing filter. And other than that, I, I think it's a nice image overall, you know. Nothing really else to complain about, but I definitely might re-edit this and tone down the saturation and the vibrance. All right, once again, I'll just reiterate, um, should you delete images, the older images at least, that you don't like anymore? Um, I'd say no, honestly. Um, I'd say at least, at the very least, keep them in a separate folder or something like that. You know, if there's really just, if there's ones that are clearly you don't like, you know, or they're just out of focus, blurry, definitely delete those. I would say that regardless, you know, if they're old or not. But um, I would just say, you know, keep them around. You know, I, th I feel like it's very helpful. You know, you look, you definitely, it's kind of like you'll look back on them. You know, as you grow as a photographer, and I definitely say you know it helps to see where you've you know evolved to. But other than that, you know, I just say keep them. All right, that concludes the video. I just you know I want to leave you with this. You know, maybe recommend you know doing a little audit on your whole backlog of photos. You know, look back at you know the oldest stuff or even the newest stuff and see what you know you really don't like or maybe you would change. You know, and then maybe see if you can edit them now and just if you could really improve upon them. You know. Just kind of really see it with a new eye now from when you've taken it versus now. And then just, you know, see if you can crop out things or clone out things and stuff like that. But I highly recommend, you know, you definitely kind of look back at your older images and do that sort of thing. But it goes without saying, you know, my worst images happen to be, you know, maybe ones I took yesterday. But some of my best images I still like, you know, are ones I took years ago. So, I mean, it's always, you know, every day is different, of course. You know, I definitely just say, you know, look back at those and then see, you know, which ones you would delete and which ones, which ones you think you should keep, you know, just as a lesson or a learning lesson, you know. Other than that, that's pretty much it. This is just a little, you know, one-off video I kind of was interested in making, you know, and kind of just to raise the important question here. But other than that, I'm just going to leave you at that and uh, make sure to get on out there. Have a good day, guys.